Don, I'm sorry. Uh, Don says, I have a covered call on SQ, square, uh, September 70 short, and the stock's at 74.31. Should I just allow the position to remain as is? Or roll the call up and out to December 75 for a credit of seven cents, or, or add a long call. I don't know your exact prices, but you'd want to run the scenarios yourself to see what best suits your needs and your expectation going forward. First thing I'd have to answer myself in this question, Don, what do we have? You've got a covered call on Square, currently closed at 74 today, and you're holding a 70 strike for September. Now, first thing you have to do is step back. Ignore everything else that's going on and just think of it as a covered call. I, I know you're doing that, but I want to go a, a level lower. Okay? What is the goals for the covered call strategies in your portfolio? In other words, what is the X amount of return you're looking to make over an X period of time? That should be part of your trading plan. We should have that already written out. Right? 2% per month. 1.5% per month target gain with keeping risks controlled to X percent to the downside. Now, how long have you been in this trade? If you liquidate the covered call right now, what is your return? What is the return on the position if you allow yourself to get assigned at 70? We've got to step back and look at that first. The portfolio tools will show you that. Another thing I want to know is when are the next earnings? Okay, it doesn't matter. Either way, you're, you're having a call open through earnings, and is that going to hinder the potential return more? Okay, but 20 days away, 28 days away, August 1st after market, looks like it's confirmed. That's when the next earnings is. That does come into play. I'm jot that down, 8-1 after market. Okay, so again, I'm going to assume this is a profitable position, meaning I'm going to assume that you got the stock maybe at 72 or 71, maybe even right at 70, Don. And what you did then is you sold the call. Uh, oh, oh, okay, yeah, here we go. That you sold the call as well for a positive return. You know, it might have been four dollars when you sold it, or you rolled it to September. Okay, so let's just put it in the portfolio from scratch. I'm going to go to our portfolios here. Uh, it's going to pull up this uh, webinar account here, which tracks some of my radioactive positions, but otherwise, oh. Let's take a look at our July 20, oh, that was from two years ago. Oh, no, 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 okay, uh, June 20th, that should have been June 28th covered call. We set up a bearish covered call in UTHR. This was for last week's webinar. It's at 80.01, so it looks like the 20 contracts or so um, that we were talking about that were sold on UTHR is originally 20. Um, on that position might be looking pretty good now, but I think he was already assigned on those 20 short calls against his 500 shares and he has 15 longs, which are still uh, out of the money. Okay, any case, I'm sorry folks. Let's go to this position. Let's create this position. Covered call here in the portfolio. And I'm gonna say that we bought SQ, doesn't matter when, let's just say a month ago. And I'm gonna say we paid, oh why not, 71.50. And we rolled it at that time, whatever the cost was. But after rolling, we rolled out to the September 70 call, and we got 410. That'd be a good return. Okay? Uh, same date, 605. Doesn't really matter. All right, so here's my covered call entry. I'm going to put it in the portfolio. It shows me here's my covered call. Now, the first thing I want to know, see here on the position analysis tab on the portfolio. Of course, this is... Uh, just giving me a breakdown. It assumes no other adjustments have been made. It's just basing it off my prices that I input. And so right now, the max expected return was 3.9%. And currently, I'm at a loss of 1.3% on the trade. That's my liquidation. And if I hold it, I'd make 3.9%. But I've got to hold it for another two months, right? Uh, 77 days away to September expiration to get that 3.9%. Okay, step one, if it's not already there, which I'm pretty sure it is, James, I'm Don, I'm sorry, Don, put it into your portfolio. Next step I want to do is I want to go to position actions and then position analysis. This is the proper breakdown of your trade. If you've been rolling this call before, you've made other adjustments to it, included a dividend. 
So what again is showing you is your liquidation value versus your future expiration value. You had mentioned rolling up to the December 75 call for a credit of seven cents. What does this breakdown to me come down to? Okay, where am I now? Well, I'm at a loss if I liquidate. Okay, I don't know if you're in the same spot, but I'm at a loss if I liquidate right now. If I wait 77 days and the stock's above 70, I make 3.9%. What you want to look at here, you know the, the, the new adjusted net credit for you is $0.07. Cents. Mine's 405 so this was looking more better to me. But because of the 5% move up, I'd have an 11.2% return. So ignoring where I am right now, if you still want to stay in this position, most likely this position is a loss for you. Um, but look, would I do this? Would I increase my time into trade another 90 days, I'm just going to call that 4%, and we'll call this 11%, another 90 days to make an additional 7% return. That's what I'm comparing. What is my return now? I know that if I liquidate, I'm at a loss, so I'm probably not doing that because there's still so much time value on that September call that you sold. Hey, even though the stock's up, it's got intrinsic value now, but it's still holding time value, right? We're going to see that in the last 60 days, 45 days, or 30 days. Now, is it worth it to roll for me in this case? Well, again, what am I saying? I'm moving from 4% roughly to 11.2. All right, let's call it what it is, a 7.3% gain for 90 days. If my target is a 2% return every 30 days, which remember, you know, some of us thought that was 42% of us thought that was the uh, good target there. I'm so sorry, 75% are achieving uh, 1 to 2%. 42% want 20 to 25%, which would be around 2% per month. Okay. But let's say my target is 2% per month. I'm increasing it by 90 days or 3 months, so that'd be a 6% return. This more than matches my trading plan. If I'm comfortable with the stock continuing on, the increase in potential return still matches my goals. What I'm moving from where I am now to where I might be in 90 days, I would do that. If this return, for whatever reason, you, you're continuing costs, and it, it's going to be different because you said you only got a seven cent adjusted net credit. If I could make four percent in September, I'm at a loss right now, and um, this return to the December 75 only goes up from four to say six percent, another two percent return for the remaining 90 days. This does not match my trading plan. I wouldn't sell that covered call now if I was just buying the stock, so why roll to it? If you think the stock's going to stay above 70, you might be better off now waiting closer to September to get closer to the target gain you initially set. Do not roll for the sake of rolling just because it comes up. Make sure it matches your trading plan for the amount of time you're increasing in the position. It has to still match your trading plan. If not, Get out now if you've got a gain and you don't want to hold it for the remaining 77 days to September. If you've got a loss now, maybe hold it. If it stays above 70, you get assigned. And you threw out that other option there of buying the call. Well, now that you've got it in your portfolio, either from this page, you can click on what if calculations, or from the cover call, of course, we can just go to profit and loss chart. There's my September covered call. And I, what is he talking about? He's saying, well, what if we added a September call here, maybe at the 75 or the 80 strike, depending on what your outlook is. Let's just do 75. It's going to be really expensive, though. But I'm going to buy this call. Now, even with my premium, I'm now at a debit of 90 cents. But what does it do? It leaves the upside open if the stock really takes off. But what's your new break even? And do you think the stock would continue to that new break-even point done by September expiration in the next 90 days? That's the rough part about buying a call because now you've taken a position that could have been profitable if the stock was trading just above 70 at any time in the next 77 days to one that now has to be above 77.40. It's not a cure-all because you've got to take the whole position into account. And then, as you mentioned, if you roll December 75, does that match your trading plan? Don't even think about buying the long call because if the rolling to the September 70, I'm sorry, rolling to the December 75, Don, if that doesn't match your trading plan with the increase in profit from where you are now, rolling to it and buying a call necessarily won't either. Sure, it would leave the upside open, 
but you'd be rolling to that December 75 for a small increase in return for another 90 days, you'd leave the upside open, but the benefit of that wouldn't come in until the stock's probably at 83, 84, 85. Do you think that's possible by square with December? And it might be, sure. But that's what you want to graph. Graph the roll itself and then add the long call to it. Does it match your expectation of what would need to happen halfway between now and December? In September, what would the benefits of leaving the trade alone now as it is to September expiration versus doing your roll and then adding the extra long haul or even adding the September long haul, we can see it here. You'd still be at a profit if the stock was above 70 at September expiration where now you need it to go above 77. It's almost another 10% move to increase your profit range. Is that worth it just to have this look of an infinite upside in case it really takes off? I don't know. You'll have to consider that uh, as well. Um, someone mentioned um, it's an interesting concept. It depends where you are right now. Uh, let's go back here. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. I went back to the portfolio. And I want to go to position actions and then position analysis. I think it's, this, it's Tim. Tim. I'm sorry. I don't know why I saw Tom. It's Tim comments in and says, if you have a profit liquidating right now, of only a couple hundred dollars, liquidate the position and buy a call if you think it's going to really take off by September or December. All right, so what is Tim talking about? He's saying here on Square, well, let's say you've got a $200, $300 profit on the position, but you think it's still going to go up, has the potential to go up. Uh, yeah, it depends on the profit. So let's say I buy an 80 call okay, for $3. But let's say the profit, if I liquidate my covered call right now, is $3. This is a cost basis of $0.01. Cent. So it's sort of a no-risk long call that if the stock shoots up, you could see reasonable profits. Because you don't have any risk, you took the cost of this call. But, I mean, to, to buy the near-term calls on Square, not near-term, sorry, near the stock price, and, you know, out to September, out to December, we're talking about, you probably have to have already a $500, $600 profit on this position to make that worthwhile. But, yeah, he's saying close the covered call if you think it's still going to go up. If you've got a $200, $300 profit, even if it's only half of what you made, Tim mentions that, and buy a long call so you have a no-risk long call with unlimited upside if you're still bullish. Rather than leaving all the cash in the covered call, he means, and buying the extra call to try to get that unlimited upside if it really takes off, take the profit you have now, buy a call that almost has no risk. You've already taken in most of the profit. Yeah, you might lose that and be at break even if this goes down and the, the call goes to zero. But if you leave the position as is, it could also drop and you could be at a loss. Or you could be holding it for 77 days and not see another profit on the position. It could just stagnate where it is. If you really think it's going to take off, rather than simply just buying the extra long call, have a no cost long call in place where the worst situation you might be able to do is break even on the position as a whole. Might not solve the problem you really want, but it avoids a loss with the potential to still have that lottery ticket for unlimited upside as well. So Don, those are things to consider. I encourage you to enter this position into the portfolio. Once you've entered in the portfolio, go to that position actions link, go to position analysis. It'll give you a breakdown of the current position. See where you stand right now for your liquidation. What is your future expiration? And if you do make that roll, don't just say, hey, is it worth it to go from 3.9% return in September if it's above 70 to, let's say, a 4.2% return, or let's say 4.9% return if I roll out 90 days to December? If that doesn't match your trading plan, don't do it. But in this scenario that I put with my fake numbers, um, this is an increase of what I might make in September, 77 days away at 4% to going out 160 days, 90 days further roughly, and I'm increasing it by about 7.3% for three months, well within my target of at least 2% per month on my covered call transaction. So I would do that personally um, if I was still bullish long term. Um, but yeah, if it's not there, don't roll for the sake of rolling. Don't do it just because it shows up. Don't do it just because the stock went above. Might be better just to hold it longer even if you get it. Hey, if you get assigned early and you've got a profit of 3.9%, um, oh, this is September 75. If, you, if I get assigned early, someone just assigns me early before the earnings, let's say, for whatever reason, 
they wanted the stock at 70, they exercised their long calls. Hey, thank you. Get me out a month early with my 3.9% I was expecting 77 days away or 47 days away. You're welcome to it. Take them and go. Um, <laughs> so that's okay too to do that also. Again, if you're in a position with this where you have a reasonable gain. Why do I say that? Um, someone commented he would have to have a gain in this position, otherwise he would have, wouldn't have entered it. Well, what I'm seeing here is a number that I put in. And Don's position, he might have been following Square and rolled up the call and then rolled down the call when it fell in December with everything else and came back up and then rolled down and then spiked up. So he might have been rolling here on these positions, lowered his cost base, has been rolling back up. He might not be at a profit right now. That, that's why I keep saying that. He's trying to limit the loss by rolling the covered call as the market moved up and down. That's why I'm saying if he's at a profit. It's not like he entered a position last month that had a negative return. You would have opened a new position with a negative return, obviously, that you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, but this could be a position that's been rolled several times and he's been holding for a few months and trying to get back to break even. So right now the liquidation might not be positive. My liquidation is not positive. Uh, this is the future return, remember. Um, but if I, with this fake trade I put in, these fake numbers that I put in, if I liquidated right now, I'd be a loss of 1.3%. Because the call that sold is further out in time, and I need to get closer to expiration to start seeing that time decay in my favor. Today's material are my thoughts on your questions, designed for educational purposes, increasing investing performance and options knowledge. Any stocks or options discussed today should not be taken as direct trading suggestions. Uh, options do involve risk, may not be suitable for all investors. If you wanted to test out any of the tools you saw today, that portfolio tool to track and manage your positions and evaluate position analysis, those rollouts aren't only shown for covered calls, they're shown for other spread positions, buying call options, married puts of course, collar spreads, diagonal spreads, and a lot more. But you can test out Power Options for free at any time. Just go to PowerOp.com, put in your name, uh, an email address, click Start My Trial, and you have full access to Power Options for 14 days, no billing, no credit card required. After that, our subscription level started at only $45 per month, monthly service. Um, most popular one is our 20-minute delayed service at $65 per month. You can also upgrade that if you want access to the historical tools. Our historical database goes back to April of 2006 for backtesting purposes, viewing historical options chains. And of course, we do offer a real-time service and then a full package that includes everything as well. Other free education and free stuff, hey, we talked about that blog article. I sent everyone the link there, blog.powerop.com. The Balanced Approach for Portfolio Success is the title, but you can just do a search on the blog for Barbell, and it'll come up if you missed the link earlier. Uh, also, you can check out our webinars at any time. Just go to powerop.com slash webinars.asp. Some of the webinars are not available if you're not a current trial member or subscriber. That's just another reason to take a trial or subscribe. But you can hunt around on YouTube our vast array of many, many videos over the years that are archived publicly and available on YouTube uh, just under user power options as well. If anyone thinks of any questions later on, send me an email at any time. Just send it to support at powerop.com. Or, of course, you can send it to support at RadioactiveTrading.com. You can also call us during market hours at 302-992-7971. And if you are a trial member subscriber, you can schedule one of those coaching sessions at any time.